Making It Work is brought to you by Wealthsimple, which gives everyone access to simple, affordable investing on cruise control. One of my biggest pet peeves in university was people whose parents paid for everything. Whether it was their rent, their phone bill, their tuition, I hated it. I would spend hours searching out and applying for much-needed scholarships, only to find out that John Smith won it and was using the money to fund a much-needed getaway to New York City. I would trudge through part-time jobs, taking on extra hours during reading weeks or holidays when other students would be back in their hometowns. By my final year of university, I was balancing four part-time jobs on top of classes, but that was simply to be able to afford to live. Paying off my student loan didn't occur to me until I walked off the graduation stage and thought, now what? Fortunately, after one year, I finished paying back my student loan, just two months after I started my first full-time job. I live in Canada, and my debt was 21,000 Canadian dollars, equivalent to about 16,700 American dollars. Here are seven things that allowed me to pay this debt off quickly. Number one, I bought a self-help book. Realizing I needed to take control of my life, I unashamedly hit the self-help aisle. I stumbled upon Well Healed, A Smart Girl's Guide to Getting Rich by Leslie Ann Scorgie, and I immediately thought, I'm a smart girl, I want to get rich. Though this book did not lead me to immediate riches, it was packed with gems of advice about how to pay down multiple debts at once and how to manage your money. I felt I could relate to this Canadian woman who was so driven towards putting herself first. I urge you to take a stroll down the aisle at your local bookstore and find whatever guide speaks to you most. Number two, I created a budget. I call my budget the Bank of Haley, and I keep it on my desktop to open and update daily. You only need to know one equation to make a simple budget. Income minus expenses equals net income. That seems obvious, but seeing it in front of you on one page shows you your paycheck minus your bills and spending equals your potential savings. I would transfer my net income from checking to savings each month. Number three, I switched banks. My bank, which I'd used since childhood, sucked. My first step was to find a bank with no banking fees since I could no longer have a free student account. My then roommate told me about the bonus she and I would get if I opened a new account at her online bank. The main difference between this new bank and my former bank was that their website was on point and user-friendly. Everything was easy to navigate, transactions were reflected in real time, and they also posted relevant finance articles. Number four, I worked a lot. By the end of my undergrad, I had worked eight different jobs, and by the final year, I was balancing four at once. Then I graduated. The fun thing about being done with school is you have more time to work, the rest of your life, in fact. For just under a year, I managed to balance six part-time jobs before finally landing a full-time salaried position. Number five, I made sacrifices. While in school, I lived in the reasonably priced city of Ottawa in a beautiful three-bedroom apartment in a trendy part of town. My share was a cool 570 Canadian dollars inclusive a month, around 450 American. You can imagine my horror when I moved to Toronto after graduation and discovered the shockingly high cost of living. I couldn't fathom that I was now living in a not-so-nice area with a random man as a roommate, paying 760 Canadian dollars, or 600 American a month plus utilities. After complaining to one of my coworkers that this grown man I lived with didn't understand the basics of recycling, she mentioned that a room in her house was available. The location was a decent bit north of the bustling downtown, but for 600 Canadian dollars a month or 480 American, I wouldn't complain. I moved into this new house in January, but not too long into my renting, I realized this would never be the home I was looking for. I had my own room, but I shared the rest of the house with my coworker, one other roommate, my landlord, my landlord's girlfriend, and their dog. And because my landlord lived in the house, I never felt like I had my own space. I felt like I was a visitor. I knew this situation wasn't ideal, so I told myself that once I paid off my loan, I would move into a place of my own. If you're looking for motivation to pay down your debt, I'm not saying you have to move into a crowded situation you don't feel comfortable in, but it definitely helps. Number six, I had a frugal social life. When I moved to Toronto, I knew one person. When you only have one friend, you're often staying in and watching Netflix. I spent my nights volunteering at different theaters in exchange for a complimentary ticket and a free coffee. 
Big cities are nice in that you can often find some sort of trendy blog that will have listicles like free things to do in your city this week. Take advantage of those. Also, get a library card or go for walks while listening to a good podcast that makes you feel as though you're chatting with friends. Number seven, I made a savings goal. I told myself that once I saved $5,000, I would give an extra $1,000 to my loan. After achieving that, it felt so great to see such a large chunk of the loan removed, subsequently lowering my interest on the loan for that month. I then told myself that once I saved another $2,000 total, I would give another $1,000 to my loan and so on. Setting a fun challenge like this made me want to keep saving and paying down my debt. Money shouldn't be a topic to avoid, and once you start facing your bank account, it's a lot less scary than it once seemed. And remember that you don't need to be a financial genius to start investing. In fact, Wealthsimple makes it easy for anyone to get started, no matter what your financial background may be. Wealthsimple is online investing that's as simple and human as it gets. In just five minutes, they'll build you a custom portfolio to fit your personal goals and timeline. Just answer a few easy questions and they'll manage your money for you on autopilot. Set it, forget it, and let your money grow in the background. You can turn on automatic deposits as well as set up a smart savings account with higher rates than big banks for your shorter term goals, your wedding, your next great adventure, or that handbag you need. They also have a socially responsible portfolio that invests in green stocks and companies that support gender diversity. The fees are much lower than big banks and TFD viewers will get their first $10,000 managed for free with no minimum deposit. Check them out at wealthsimple.com slash TFD or use the link in our description. There are no account minimums and it only takes a few minutes to start. No excuses.